uh, now that we have uh, some temperatures uh, recorded, let's try to kind of make a little conclusion of what we see here. Um, the first thing I want to do is um, apologize for uh, uh, some of the readings. Um, I think there was a couple of them after looking at the video that uh, at the decimal place I got wrong. It may have been 0.3 and I said 0.8. And uh, the reason for that is because um, uh, I'm getting to the age where bifocals are necessary. and So reading the smaller numbers uh, are a little bit harder and when I try to do it quick you know, I don't always uh, get the accuracy I'd like. And then, um, by no means are these videos professionally done. Uh, whenever it seems like there's a camera in the room or something, it makes me really nervous. Um, one of the interesting things, I think, in running this was um, the temperature differences. Uh, when we started a load and uh, uh, as the load dried and, and uh, got to the dry point there, the inlet and outlet temperatures uh, really changed a lot. Um, I believe the inlet temperature, uh, boy, we'd go up to as high as uh, 118.9 degrees on the inlet temperature towards the end of a load. And uh, during a load, um, when the air was moist, uh, the temperatures, the inlet temperatures would drop down to the 107, 110 area. Um, and so they did go up as the load got dry. Um, I calculated out the average temperature differential between the inlet and outlet air over the uh, 5 hours and 30 minutes that we ran it. And um, we have right around 14 degrees of uh, temperature differential. Uh, we had a low temperature differential of 8.6 degrees and a high temperature differential of 18.4 degrees. And at 18.4 degrees, that actually shows a pretty significant uh, uh, heat exchange. Um, we had a room start temperature of 63.4 degrees and a high at the end of running of 71.1 degrees. Uh, we've been going through a cold spell lately uh, where nighttime temperature is about uh, 10 to 12 below and our daytime temperature gets up to about 4 so the basement temperature kind of cools down and uh, so we warmed it up from 63.4 to 71.1 which I think is a pretty significant gain. Um, at the end of the run there I did drain the condensate uh, that had collected in the drum and it was only about a thimble full. Uh, when I originally started this I thought I was going to be dealing with a lot more moisture uh, that would be condensed inside the drum but it turns out that the volume uh, there just isn't a whole lot there and so I don't even have anything draining the drum um, I just run it. Uh, the, the amount of moisture that, that I have to deal with is very very small um, you look and um, the temperature on the uh, top of the drum, you know, with the thermometer just sitting there, actually uh, goes, gets about uh, 79.9, uh, 75. So the actual outside temperature of the drum itself doesn't get that hot. Um, and that was another thing I was thinking that we'd see uh, a little bit higher temperature on the outside of the drum. Uh, but that doesn't seem to be happening. Um, I think with the air blowing through the tubes, we're actually drawing quite a bit of the heat out of the drier uh, air itself. Um, there's potential for uh, maybe an improvement on the design. I think if I was going to build it over again, I think... Um, I would go with smaller tubes and probably more of them in there. Um, and I would change the path. Right now it's a simple in at the bottom and out at the top. And I would make it so the path of the hot air from the dryer would have to uh, uh, take a longer path. It wouldn't be uh, as much of a direct route out. So the chance for uh, drawing more heat out of the air uh, would be greater. Um, there was some suggestions I've had of using copper, and um, and I think that's a good idea, except for copper is expensive. 
if anyone's ever gone out and bought copper now, uh, it's not cheap. And I want to keep this real cheap and, and uh, um, I want the payback to come very fast and so uh, keeping it inexpensive is, uh, is a good thing. Um, is the project a success? I would say um, yes it is. Uh, this would be heat that would normally be going right outside and be vented outside and uh, I've been able to capture it and uh, bring it in to uh, warm the house in the winter time. Um, I still have a pipe made up so when the temperatures outside go up that I can switch back and just vent everything outside. So I won't be trying to use the air conditioner to cool heat that I'm pulling out of the dryer. Um, other than that I'm sure um, everybody's probably got some good ideas out there and I want to encourage you to to try out your designs and build something.